एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल मैं मंगला चरण से शुरू करूंगी ओंकारम बिंदु संयुक्ता bhajan which highlights our soul journey and who we are I 
विनाशी हूँ अजर अमर हूँ पूर्ण शुद्ध हूँ मैं आत्मा हूँ मैं आत्मा हूँ मैं आत्मा हूँ मैं आत्मा हूँ Thanks, Dr. Suganji Jain, for the kind introduction. I join the family and you all in paying my tributes to late Sri Mati Uma Kanta Jain, and wish that she continues to be beacon for all of us. What Dr. Suganji Jain has briefly given was perhaps the summarization of the art uh, presentation I am going to say. I'll try to elaborate it on the, but before I proceed further, there are certain disclaimers. It is though medically oriented, but I'll try to do it as simple as possible. So those people who want to pardon me for the medical, uh, less uh, be medical, do so. The second point is, I'm directing my lecture or my deliberation to the younger colleagues and hope that the elders will teach me rather than uh, I'm speaking for them. So the younger colleagues, if they can be motivated, that will be my main process. The title of the talk which I have selected for today is the lifestyle disease and how it can be amalgamated with the Jain philosophy. The principles of the Jainism are very strong and strict. However, they have been ritualized a lot. Can we explain these principles and the rituals with the scientific background? so that it can be accepted by the people all around and not only the giants all around and put it into the reality. So that's what my main aim of the talk today. Jainism is based on the premise that all living beings are interconnected. They live symbiotically, means they help each other in living, propagating, securing. So all these are the primary aims that the food, reproduction, and the security. These are the primary aims. And we all are meant to complement each other rather than fighting for that. That's why the problem is, and the Jainism gives an answer to that one. I'll also stress that Jainism is not a religion. It's a philosophy or the way of living. So by labeling it as a conventional meaning of the religion, you will be distorting it and putting it into the controversies. Now, the, there are hosts of the lifestyle disease. Host and the spectrum is increasing. You take even the smaller diseases like irritable bowel syndrome, bronchial asthma, chronic obstructive lung disease. But the major or the common one are obesity, overweight, hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, cancer. These are the major ones which I'll be stressing, but there are a host of the one. Where, and other, other conditions which, or other terms which we use are the, no, other than lifestyle, psychosomatic disorders, where the psycho adds to the soma or the disease or the physical illnesses. So these are the words where they but I'll be uh, stressing only on the common lifestyle disease. Uh, if you look into the these one, they don't occur in isolation. Like a obese person is also prone for the heart disease, 
is also prone for the osteoarthritis is also prone for the obstructive apneas diabetes heart disease and so many so it doesn't occur in isolation it all depends upon your constitution that whether you are prone for and the lifestyle trigger set so these are the diseases they were not there they just manifest once the lifestyle changes so if you are with the nature if you are nurturing the nature you are not going to get or you are not at least you are going to halt them and slow down their progresses so basically the lifestyle diseases are partly under your control that's what i want to stress that even the cancer which is uncurable at the present they can also be minimized or their progression and even if you develop cancer they can be made more tolerable to you so these are the points which will be stressing on the one it is pertinent to note that the osteoporosis which is characterized by loss of or the reduction in the bone mass is also because of physical inactivity and the faulty diets your diets are not good one so basically the majority of the disease if you look into they are either because of the physical inactivity battery is low or your physical inactivity or the dietary so these are the two major pillars or major reasons for the causation of the life style diseases so these are the i have tried to list them they are not the total but non modifiable you cannot change your age which is progressing you can't change your gender or the heredity you just carry them but blood pressure cholesterol diabetes now they are either product of the lifestyle diseases or that themselves cause other lifestyle diseases to progress dr sugan ji has already told you mental stress is one of the point uh, and another is changes in the environment partly we are responsible for changing in the environment smoking faulty nutrition and the sedentary lifestyles so there are many factors why we have come to this stage what are the modifying factors either it is the influence of the time westernized culture where we are getting more materialistic than to the spiritualist and the peer pressure the most important one our diet is now packed with the packaged food and the drinks we are uh, eating uh, root vegetables or not that's another point late night eating will be touching later on and laxity in preparation of the meals so these are some of the modifying factors which can be strongly addressed with our things if you look into the solutions are very simple but they are very difficult to apply they looks very simple walking 150 minutes say, per week Two and a half hours per week will give you significant results, but can we stick to it for days, for the weeks, for the months, or years? So what it is said, it is not a one step. It is a lifestyle. Changes are also lifestyle, and the factors are also lifestyle. Second is the plant-based diet. We'll be touching this, which has got high. the dietary fibers and we have put it as a acronym fork so if you use the good fork that the western lies not we use the fingers so i should have used the word finger here use motivational skills and not fear based it's not that if you do this one you will die early no it's if you do this one you will live longer you will live comfort so don't put fear based learning is a motivational where it gives you stimulus you to live and smoking cessations so don't use your fingers not to smoke so another app is the finger then pillow
अच्छा ओके आई आई बी इट इट जस्ट गेट्स मूव फ्रॉम हियर हाँ स्ट्रेस रिडक्शंस एडिकेट स्लीप एंड बी पार्ट ऑफ स्पिचुअल कम्युनिटी सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द पॉइंट्स इफ यू गो इनटू द आवर थीम ऑफ द टुडे लेक्चर जैन प्रैक्टिसेस पर मोस्ट ऑफ देम might be there are some limitations i'll be touching in the end but most of them can be addressed if you adopt a jain lifestyle or if you look into but again i'll i'm not given the this one uh, uh this limitations most of the religions they talk in the same language but in a different way so we are not saying it is only the jain it's the all religions they talk in the same things be plant based be uh, uh, stop smoking stop drinking so they are the common one with the, each one of us the three jewels you already are aware perhaps you are better knowledgeable in interpreting them non violence or ahimsa is the backbone of the jain religion it teaches you to respect the other soul or other body and so it as i in the beginning i said symbiotically living together how we can so but i'll not elaborate on these three jewels i'll just mention them no one said it nessa the anekant path you may be interpreting a thing in a different way but the our goals are the same and if our goals are the same the interpretation may differ based on our own mindset and our own feelings our own circumstances the person sitting in the dry area of rajasthan will not have the same feeling as in the kerala with the way wet and the total so there may be different feelings but goal is the same if the goal is same so respect the other people truth may have many perspectives so anekant was is the another one which helps us into the giving into the mental reducing it the mental conflict you are seeing it the current uh, the how the violence is taking a place on the one decision or another decisions you are just seeing but that's not the needed anekant was at the one and third is the aparigraha it reduces one's need and the greeds if you got and once you adopt this particular principle the losses with the storages and its a uh, wastage which occurs with the hold holding the things goes much down it means the natural sources are curtailed so the sources which are limited it may be the petrol it may be the food items and whatever you do, just there are many the list is empty empty but so we need not to but i am not going to concentrate right now on the these three jewels i'm going to concentrate more on the other aspects these are the things which we have been taught we were doing it but lately we have changed it to the certain extent vegetarianism another meaning is animal protection water supply circadian rhythm i'll be touching little more detail means you uh, eat as per the solar cycle your biological clock is very important fasting is another important caloric and other direct uh, dietary restrictions now it's very much in the market very many diets gyms they are proliferating and what you are getting is the things which are already imbibed in the jain literature in our own way of life it is already there why to go to gym why to go for a dietary schedule it is already there plant life and environment gut microbes which perhaps has been less touched i will be touching it little and the last point is the meditation and the yoga uh, day after tomorrow we have got the international yoga day and uh, it will it further imparts that yes we must consider meditation which was there in our rituals it was already prescribed by our sages and seers coming to the first point vegetarianism jains have got a specific dietary codes they are really strict 
and they are basically on the non-violence. Though to survive, one has to destroy somebody else's life. But we are permitted only to go for the life with one sense. One sense is only permitted, which means the organisms in the other simple language which are not moving. Life which is not moving, perhaps you can have that one. But more than that, you are not supposed to. But there are many restrictions in that one. Don't waste it. And certain root vegetables, which I'll be touching later on, they whether they should be taken or not. And so you have utmost survival. So don't waste it anything. Don't have it overeaten. Have it only which is needed. But very good point in the Jain diet practice. It looks into the nourishment, ethics, and the eating practices. Another important point from the neurologist point, it modulates our mind as well. Our thoughts are also improved with the vegetarian diet. I'll be touching it as well. And why we need to look into the diet once again? Our diet habits have recently changed a lot. In the last 50 years, the restaurants have uh, come up, the home cooking has come down. We are now slave of the taste, swath. And if you go into the, any hotels or any, any, say, in your own building, if there's some fragrance is coming, you always get attracted to it. So is it correct or not? A point which you have to think over. Because of that, we are with the indiscriminate, every time eating and overeating. So these are the points which we are suffering from this one. And because of that, our diet is increased in saturated fat, cholesterol, and refined sugars. And now we are asking for it, whether Kellogg's uh, or Museli, obviously there, and they are costly alternatives. But it is not; it was not recommended. Refined sugar was not recommended in our diet. It was the complex sugar which was recommended in our. So if you look into our dietary recommendations, they were not for the costly. They were the available which were there in our home. I'll not be touching in detail about the vegetarianism, but it provides you enough protein. One of the points which is given by the non-wise is that the muscles, if you eat non-wise meat, muscles are there. It, it helps in birth, but you eat more than what is needed in the vegetarian diet. So you don't have to think in that way. If you are uh, having it for other reasons, I'm not touching right now, but have the enough protein with the vegetarian diet. In fact, it has been told that the non veg they eat twice, than the pro uh, twice the protein which they need it. So it's uh, not that they are there eating more than needed. And, the, and it, otherwise say they eat more protein, have more strength, more stamina and other things, but that's a hoax. That's a not a true picture. On long term, on the short and medium term benefits have been demonstrated with the various studies, including what some of ours. It, it reduces the heart disease, diabetes, the strokes, cancer, which I already said in my first, uh, second slide, the all lifestyle disease with the vegetarians, their incidence comes down. So you can think of an important, which has been told in the introductory lecture today, psychologically, vegetarian diet is more related to the decrease in stress, anxiety, negative emotions. It is more associated with the positive emotions like love and compassion. Happiness is much more. So why to go for? Important point, it modulates your gut microbes. I'll be touching my microbes later on. Towards a favorable diversity. It means your stomach itself or the intestine, not the stomach, but intestine, act as a, your own doctor for you. And if you have the vegetarian and non-veg will have the different things. 
Another point which is said, lack of protein I already touched, minerals, B12, iron and calcium, fatty acids. But these are the some of the uh, labels which are there. Some of them are true also. As a doctor, I know that those who are staunch vegetarian, they lack B12. So do we have to have a second look on our dietary consumption? We have, do we have to be rigid in eating non, uh, not root vegetables or to the dairy products? Dairy products, of course, are not uh, prohibited from our diet. But root vegetables, fermented foods, they are good source of the B12. But should we, because of our religious practice, I'm putting religious and the philosophical as a intermingling words. So should we go for that one? Another is the iron and calcium. If you are having enough dairy products, calcium will be there. But mind it, all the things, particularly the B12 and other, they will be only where the life is proliferating. This is a bad word, but unless the life is proliferating, you won't have the B12. So that's why the people who eat a non veg they, are, they never had the B12 deficiencies. But it's the vegetarians, staunch vegetarians particularly, they suffer from the B12. And in my practice, I often order, I provide supplements, which is not a good one. I'll be giving a solution later, later on. Coming to the nature. Our nature, is we are developing from the herbivorous. We are from carnivorous, we are coming to the herbivorous. Carnivorous means those who eat flesh. And the herbivorous, those who eat plant-based. Our body is turning from the carnivorous to the herbivorous. Right now, we are in a middle stage omnivorous. We eat for the both sides. Our nail mouth, particularly the teeth, they are meant for the grinding the food, which is not there with the people who are, or, or animals who are with the eating meat. So they, they just swallow it. Our, if you see the back molars, they are just grinding like a, your mixer. It grinds the food. It chews the food, my parotid glands. It chews the food, and then it prepares the food and then put it in my stomach. The stomach needs less acid because the proper digestion has been done in the mouth. So they say always we have been taught that digest the food as much as possible, 32 times, many times, it, the proverb says, 32 times you digest, you chew, and then you swallow. So your mixing is there, so you need the stomach has to do the less work for you. So the pH of the stomach is not that acidic as in the non veg So our stomach as a pH is 4 to 5. Not good for the non veg food. Jaw movements. Our jaw movements in the, all the four directions. Whereas animal, those who are for the meat eaters, any meat eater, they move only on the two directions. It means they just don't grind the food. So the jaw, teeth, canines, they all are meant for the having the meat. That's not for the... Another important point, which is hidden inside our stomach, or means in the, my belly, is the long intestine. Our intestines are very, very long compared to the meat eaters, animal. I'm putting meat eater, meat eater animals like lion and the, this one. Their intestines are shorter. They don't need for the long digestion. So our food is good digestion, good digestion, part digestion in the stomach, and the long absorption in the intestine. The colon, the where ultimately pass the stool, is very short in the people or the animals who are non-veg. Because if it remains for a long period in the intestine, in the long intestine, it gets fermented, putrefied. 
so it is not good for the meat to be there for the vegetables yes it's there so if you look into all these aspects you will find that the nature has put it or made it as a vegetarian and it is developing for last 10000 this part is developing into the vegetarian herbivores and not to the carnivores so we must not antagonize the nature we must support the nature stopping to the medical aspect of the vegetarianism coming to the non environmental aspect there are long list in fact a full lecture can be on that one and i am not competent to answer that one some of the figures i can if you look into the livestock the meat productions half of the land which is there available for the grazing and for the food products half of that goes for the meat production and rest up goes for the part for the animal for the vegetables and part for the so even more than half is available for the meat productions so lot of even if you look into water one uh, kg of the cabbage requires 33 gallons of the water and 1 kg of the meat requires 5300 gallons of the water so you see how much natural resources are being wasted for the production of the meat that's very very important the cows if you look into the even for the dairy products also we are not meant for making dairy products that's why you see the glucose galactose lactose intolerance is increasing these is very much and the cows they produce 100 million tons of the methane annually and this gas methane and the other green houses they trap the heat which is coming from the sun 20 times more than the carbon dioxide which is there the naturally with the vegetarian meals it has been estimated by national academy of science that if every one of us turn vegetarian by 2050 the greenhouse gases will be reduced by 70% so these are the fantastic figures or the amazing figures which are there where the things can be so sorry for the so environmentally we are more inclined to be vegetarian only point which is there which is i have not put that slide i will be speaking now is that only 39% of the world population is vegetarian so more than 60% they are non veg if everyone turns vegetarian where will you produce all these vegetables that's the one of the argument which is coming all over that's the one point that the having the can we afford to have everyone to be vegetarian but yes our ultimate aim should be vegetarian we'll be coming to this point Please later no no i'm comfortable sir i want to ah oh yes yes that if <coughs> slide set okay no yes i i phone kar raha hu so if you look into this one greenhouse gases will come down by more than 70% if everyone of us turn vegetarian the carbon emission which is 57% with the meat and the dairy products the dairy products also are equally blamed for the environmental degradation where the plant based food has got the 50% of the greenhouse or the carbon emissions so look into the overall environmental things the vegetarians have got a edge over environmental protection that's the one point which we must go into the coming to the
uh, shifting from the food to the water. Filter water is the scientific. We all are now with the bisleri and the other bottled water. So importance has already been given to us by the uh, companies or by the industry. The filtered water, but this uh, was already there in our, to have the safe and drinking water was already there in the, whether it was putting the, boiling the water, filtering, uh, straining it through the cloth or putting it, or putting the rock, the dust, the, the ashes in that one was already there. And the element or the principle was safe and drinking water. The safe drinking water was the principle was there already imbibed in our philosophy. And we, industry have cached it, but we have uncached it. We are putting it into the more costly things. We all are going into the bottled water, which is very costly, may not be correct one. Even people say, if you put ash in that one, it makes the water more alkaline, which is the real. And some industries are coming with the alkaline water, the which you are getting either mineral water, alkaline water, rather than going into the acidic water. So, so Jen is prohibited from unfiltered water. That was there already in our things. If you look into livestock, they account for 50% of the water consumed in USA. Even Jens have gone one step ahead to that one. Filter the water through a strain, through a strain through a cloth, and put that organisms which are there on the top of the straining, put back into the water. So not to not to stop or not to destroy that or small organisms. So the practice of Jivani or Bichavani was already there. Whether we are still following that one or not, Jivani, they call it Jivani. Uh, yeah, it has come. Okay. Uh, so relevance with the white uh, pipe and water supply and bottle drinking water, the practice of Jivan is there or not, we are yet to come into that. Coming to the another important point, biological clock. You must understand that one, that after uh, seven o'clock in the night or five o'clock in the morning, before five o'clock, so between evening five to the morning five, your digestion is much less, your metabolism is much less. So the circadian rhythm or body rhythm tells us to have the water only, or the, or the food only during the period where we are active. If you go into the English literature, eat like a king, have the uh, lunch like a common person, and the dinner as if you are feeding the enemy. So follow that one. So switching to a higher, uh, heavier breakfast, the three meals a day, all the three meals to be very strong one, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is not a correct one. This is a new invention which has come up recently. Earlier we were with the two meals only. This, uh, I often ask, uh, my students name the vegetarian animals who eat during the night. There are very few animals which are nocturnal, like deer or the this one uh, hippos. They eat in the night. Otherwise, most of us, and except for the human beings, no no animal vegetarian animal eats in the night. Thanks to the curtains, the artificial light that we have switched over to the right. The first meal post sunrise and the last meal before sunset was the age old practice, which we have been taught. We are forgetting that one. The marketed, currently you find in the market, intermittent fasting, going into the 16 eight cycle, eight hours feeding, 16 hours fasting. Was there already in the things which we are thinking? Even people have gone further to reduce the weight, 
four hours feeding, 20 years, uh, 20 hours uh, uh, fasting. So that was there already there. Principles of the, because, but Jainism, unfortunately, has highlighted more on the Insha, that more bucks are killed in the night. That's why they thought that it's, but it, is, it has got a part of the scientific way also. Whether it was there in our literature or not, we need to look into that one. Even scientifically, we have seen those people who follow the circadian rhythms, biological clock, the fluctuations in the various hormones like insulin, cortisol, thyroid, they are also regulated in that. Again, problem comes, particularly with the, my younger colleagues. They work late in the night in the office. They can't afford for the early dinner. But at least they can be taught or they can be suggested, not taught. They can be suggested to have a uh, no snacks or little snacks or the packed snacks have more fruits, have more vegetables, the raw vegetables, rather than going for the packed uh, packages food. So these are the problems with there, there with the current lifestyle, but we can improve upon that one. Briefly touching on the there are list of the uneatable items be it fermented food, root vegetables, even preparation and storage of the food is not uh, is a recommended thing in our, our literature. No cooking at the night, eat the food prepared on the same day and avoid leftover. So food should not be, because the quality degrades that one. The calorie restrictions or the dietary restrictions already mentioned, Indiscriminate, indiscriminate eating leads to increased insulin and glucagon, main reasons for the obesity. So it can be uh, by reducing the indiscriminate eating, having eating as per the solar cycle, you can. The last two points are very important. Ras parityag. And the means the limiting number of food items per day. These are the practices which are there, not for the spiritual upliftment, it is for the health reasons also. So they are both spiritual upliftment and the, so if you took into the total Jain dietary habits, they are not only for the health reasons, they are for the spiritual, so physical, mental, and spiritual upliftment is there. Just briefly mentioning the 2016 uh, uh, Nobel Prize, was given to this gentleman of, for the autophagy. You have heard many people who don't eat food for the days together. The people who eat not for, uh, for three days or more, they don't eat. They digest their own things. We, uh, we, are, we are in our own body. We have got more than 70 trillion organisms or degenerated tissues which are there and they can be source of the food. And these are not required. So even the cancerous cells can be digested if you go for the fasting. So this was the Nobel Prize which was given to that one. I wish we could have taken a lead, put it in a bigger perspective rather than only on the autophagy. Coming to the Jain fasting, the purpose is the health related is only one or the calorie restrictions. But the spiritual benefits are the plenty. It is a form of the tap. It gives you more time for the spiritual activities. It gives the penance. When you do the fasting, you come closer with the other people and you got empathy for the people who are not having that. So the fasting is not only the health reasons, it is for the spiritual reasons. And these are the, some of the points which are there, it reduces the body weight, BP, pulse, lipid, insulin, oxidative stress, and diabetes. Like, and there are plenty of things, positive mental health, increased learning, and the, we, we at uh, Ladno, we have done one uh, experiment on uh, 98 people who did the fasting during the pollution per three to 98, uh, three to uh, 30 days. And we have found 
that there is a reduction in the pulse BP, which I already mentioned, uh, body weight, pulse BP, they all become better, except that the cortisol level, they become little more, and the blood sugar level little more. Perhaps we thought that it is related to the stress which is there. The last point, telomere, which increases your longevity, also gets better with the, with the fasting. So the fasting has got a plenty of benefits, which I got it, benefits which are both physical and the spiritual. Coming to the meditation, last portion, meditation and yoga. There are two types, concentration. But, okay, the meditation and the yoga. Okay. There are two types, concentration and the mindfulness. I was reading through the Mahabharata when Arjun was just on the focusing on the eye of a fish that was pure concentration. And when Krishna was told him in the Mahabharata, forget about the everything, just concentrate on your action, not on the results. That was perhaps the open mindedness. That is the best example we can teach. We need not to go into the all religious angle only lead to the practical angle the Mahabharata has told us. So it's not only our religion, all religions are talking in the same language. It means of, means of self-realization and soul purification. <coughs> Parasympathetic replaces the sympathetic. I'll not be touching in much detail. It is an important issue in lifestyle modification as it balances mental, physical, and the spiritual health. As I said, we have done one study uh, in the elderly, 52 individuals, we studied with the meditation practices for four months. And we examined their pulse, BP, physical parameters, biochemical parameters, parasympathetic and the sympathetic parameters, and the EEG. And we found all the parameters, they showed significant improvement. Only limitation in our study was that we have not done it as a follow-up. After doing four months, what will be? Whether they were continuing to have the benefits or whether they, reg they regained onto the original aspect. So these are the points. Meditation has got an important aspect. And so this is the list of the benefits which are there. I'm not going to read it in total. It increases your longevity. The first important point, all the health benefits are there. Mental benefits are there. Attention span, memory, uh, creativity, and moral reasoning. Everyone thinks they improve. The question is, if everything improves, why are we are not adapting it? That is the big thing which is there. So to coming to the limitations and solutions. The first I have already partly touched. Does gen food lacks nutrition, nutrients? The big answer is no. Overall diet pattern is important. We must think of adding to the germinated food, fermented food, whether they are permitted by or permitted by our sages and seers, I am not very sure. The careful selection and monitoring of the B12, iron, and proteins. If you are doing it a good practice, yes, you don't have to monitor every person. But there, as Dr. Sab is aware, that we have we have got a lot many cases with the B12. And other point is, we must come out with the white paper. We must come out with the things, what the people should eat, what should not eat. It's not that, uh, unfortunately, I'll be talking later, our general literature is more restrictive rather than instructive. It tells us not to eat, not to eat, not to eat, but what to eat. So we must come out with the white paper. And as a doctor, my advice is, buy from the green grocer from the market you buy, from the vegetable vendors you buy, and not from a chemist. So don't buy the vitamins and the minerals from the chemist. Another point which is not touched in our literature is the physical activity it has not been emphasized that much. It not been negated, but it not been emphasized. It should be emphasized. It increases us, and physical activity will increase us to be in shape. So lifestyle has, uh, in the beginning, it was told to us, 
it is very important for all of us no it is important for our kids also we must teach them the physical activity from the beginning from the mental activity from the beginning and as i told mental retraining be positive and not fear based teaching that is a much more important why 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 are we getting not accepted by our younger people that we are putting fear based technology and not the positive we must put it as a role model what we are preaching unfortunately in the last 50 years the preaching has gone down and the practices have gone up so i always put it as a quotation ye darshan ka vishay hai pradarshan ka vishay nahi we are now jaise athai karte hain it is more propagated rather than being practiced that's a that's if the people the things which we are celebrating the celebration is not the part of that i am talking all the things whether tela or the tai or the arti whether you took it as a, so and so the next point which we must learn from our younger colleagues mood and content of the delivery of our literature that must be modified it's not only simple thing i said all good all good all good if it is good then why i am not able to reach to them another point which is perhaps the last one uh, we are host of trillions of the microbes more than 70 trillion organisms i am hosting them so they are within me i am I, they are not within me i am part of them so i am one of them i am one of that 70 trillions and type of diet plays a major role in deciding what type if you keep the gut microbes in a good way your health is going to be better man and if you just keep on killing with the antibiotics or with the certain uh, detergents or with the chemicals you are going to harm the positive bacteria also probiotic and prebiotics they are not recommended in our diet so they must be considered that yes probiotic prebiotic and fermented food should be considered in our diet last point which i said dravya hinsa physical violence is much detrimental than the mental violence time doesn't permit me to tell you the story but in the north state north eastern part of our country where the people were staunch in our vegetarian but when i came to know that perhaps i was more uh, i insert i was more insert than them they were staunch on non vegetarian but i'll tell you the reasons if i time for time permits so it's an gut health and microbes is an evolving field and we must do the experimental and the clinical research whether the gen diet can influence the gut gut biome and how we can modify the gen diets sorry sir last slide ritualistic to reality gen principles as i said they are more restrictive than the instructive we must change our habit of being restrictions only put more instructive what one should do we have great missionaries in past our forefathers they have established many good institutions many good things they have done they have established the colleges they have established the food places other things but perhaps we are doing it more for a few minutes few days or the few weeks we are not doing as a perpetual we are glorifying the rituals as i said few minutes back are we ready to accept the new ideas that's another point i wish to address to you incorporation of the new communication madam i methods i already told unfortunately in this materialistic world extreme austerities are not suitable so we must modify we continue so our sages seers and the staunch um, jainism they continue to practice the extreme uh, uh, austerities but we cannot recommend or we cannot say those who are not doing they are not good for that's all and last point popular and easy to understand literature must be produced uh, i'll be just giving this slides to summarize 
lifestyle choices are the cause of chronic diseases. Our genes are like a storehouse or like a bullet, uh, like a rifle, and the lifestyle choices, or the lifestyle choices, lifestyle practices, they are like the bullets. So unless you fire the bullets, the rifle is not going to work. So have your control on the lifestyle or the bullets. Nurture the nature. Be with the nature. Perhaps this is the single lesson which I learned till today. Is the nurture the nature. Find out every answer in the nature. Follow the nature. Be uh, obedient people of the nature. You will be successful. It should be a lifestyle and not sporadic event for today, tomorrow, or the weeks. No, it should be lifestyle things. And diseases are also lifestyle. Practices should also be lifestyle. And we must scientifically analyze our literature to enhance physical, mental, and spiritual health, ecological, and the environmental benefits. The small, small increment changes, they will bring big changes in the given time. So we need not to worry that we can't do the big things. Thanks a lot. Uh, any uh, lifestyle disease, any prevalence or any study has been done with the religious things. As far as the prevalence is concerned, I'm not very much aware if Dr. Sabha is aware. No, we are not aware of anything which has been done purely on the, the studies which have been done, few studies have been done mainly on the Muslims, Ramdans. Ramdan fasting is the one which has been done a lot. Two or three which I have done, I have told is a, in the mission, but three, four more are there in the Jainism. And something on the religious practices, I'm not very much aware. Something that uh, recently, uh, two days back, I saw one on the Christian fasting. But uh, I'm not very much. So the, uh, the flat answer is, the, on the religious background, many studies have not been done. It's a worth taking. Dr. Kishidhan, would you like to ask yes, something? Okay. You know, I was reading this uh, last uh, family health survey. Yeah, I said. And they said mm -hmm. that uh, non-vegetarian among Jains is increasing. Does it increase from maybe Six, or eight so, 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 six to nine, nine per six to nine percent. Ah, okay. ah, and of course, uh, uh, to fourteen percent among males and yeah, correct. Yeah. Like so anyway, you know the idea is that if there is a, any database across various religious communities about the prevalence of this type, which is no, that that only the, I also read that one six to nine percent between fourth and fifth family health services survey has been done. But as a community wise, even we have not done anything. At least, at least you know, but you know, unfortunately, I am a sociologist. Yeah. I'm concerned the Jain community as well as there. That uh, Jain community, actually there is lots of studies on religion across the world. But when it comes to Jain community, how is it changing? What is the style? What are you know, various profiles? Then they are hardly in the studies. And that's very unfortunate part that we don't know about our own community as to what is this uh, mm -hmm. you know, right now and how it is undergoing changes. So, this is, of course, a health survey that is another part. Yeah. Of the essential part of the, you know, any community. Uh, as far as the longevity and the Jainism, that is the one study which we have planned, but it is a very beginning. It is not we have planned for that one. Longevity in the Jainism. The second portion is what we our imp personal impression is that the vegetarians, particularly the Jainism, they are more prone for the diabetes. The reasons is physical activity. That is one, but uh, sedentary lifestyle. But whether it is true or it is just an impression of the few doctors only, I am not very sure. That would be true because uh, most students uh, have been either traders or now they are into professions and uh, you know, various services. And again, all these are, you know, they are living in Sweden. Uh, Professor Daniel, you are very responsible for the community. 
you are valid as a social racist, you want to see an impact of some principle. Unfortunately, we cannot do a sociological study of the past, but we can see how the society is happening today. And you are a trustee of Alice today. You know that in the last five years, we have undertaken a lot of social education studies. And we are commissioned Professor Sensitive on the field of similar research on you know, the issue. So it is going to the process of doing now. We will not do a sociological, we will do a medical research. And I think you need to do your life. I personally have observed, and a question comes in my mind. Why do you have to live so long? Most of my other workers have to live for five months. Why do they live so long? They are naked, they are the ones who do. They don't do anything. They are just a question that's going to be a never seen. Now, why are, it's a bad question, why are they in fact? Obese, most of the land of the Jews, vegetarian and then you have to join. Because we build the point of a lifestyle of change. And this can be a man, hey, vegetarian, this can be a man, I want you to go to the time for food. These are the things that we come with. Now, you know, someone can ask some questions. There were two questions on the WhatsApp. There are two questions on the WhatsApp. I'll read it. You have something to say? He's a doctor, then, you know, he's a internal medicine cardiologist. Why is it that we take that from Jaisa Khate and Vaisa Banjate? It's a common. Yeah, he is a proverb, he said. And you said in Northeast, they're both uh, non veg, but yet they're more non veg. Yeah. So I just want to clarify. Uh, uh, be, uh, because uh, time didn't permit me to, okay. I'll tell you that they were non veg. Even a lion is also non veg. Yeah. But he eats only what is needed. I eat what is needed plus I store what is not needed. In that way, I, my, my, my reason was that one. Why I am non-violent? I am violent, more violent. Because I keep, because to grab from him, I put mental illness. To grab from him, to deprive him, I do that one. That was my reason of saying that I was more insult because for him, after having his meals, of the, that non veg meals, he doesn't bother for anything. That was it. Okay, right. You know, from the Zoom, we have a question from Anita Jan, who is an ex speaker. And she asked me, yeah. can intermittent fasting be okay for those with hyperthyroid? Uh, perhaps yes. The answer is yes. But she must consult a doctor. What is her status of the hypothyroidism? It is only biochemical or is it clinical and what is the severity of that one? I have a question. Uh, just if I, I can answer the first two questions I said. One is they have asked for the importance of the root vegetables. Can you open it? Root vegetables, why they are important or they are not important? Root vegetables have been prohibited from the gens because of the lot of microbes are there. In that, one. that was the basically that one. Perhaps killing them in cooking is bad, but having them raw, is it correct or not? That is a very important. The second point is probiotic and prebiotics mm -hmm. are bad because again, the same point, they are with a lot of microbes in them. And again, I said in the beginning that I'm yet to have a good uh, thing study in which the genetics can be correlated with the, with the microbes. Perhaps we have to modify it, our aim of cooking or method of the cooking uh, to see that we don't harm too much microbes and still have the benefits from them. So to have the microbes benefit from the microbes, that is much more important rather than condemning those microbes and say don't eat my, uh, probiotics, root vegetables, fermented foods and so on. So. Uh, yes, sir. Your questions. Okay, now we have a lot of questions on the Zoom. So, Sushan, I have a time for a little time. The chat, I have a question. Is it going to be? The chat is going to be. How the chat is going to be? Can I see the chat? How can I see? What's up? What's up? Can I see the chat? Yeah, I'll die. You can see? 
वन क्वेश्चन एज कम डिक्लाइन इन कॉग्नेटिव कैपेबिलिटी with the fasting may have a negative impact on the our our thoughts in the society we do not know the much variation in thoughts and iq dr pratap singh ji as i said the fasting improves the cognitive ability and not the reduces the cognitive ability it increases our cognitive ability iq memory all things they get better including other mental faculties uh, facilities like anxiety depression they all get better one so the fasting has got a better one only if it is b12 deficiency is added to that one then the things comes into that one we may have a decline in the mental iq so you have to look into that portion b12 otherwise fasting is a safe in fact a preferred method to increase the cognitive ability. and uh, then what are the some of the foods we can have to improve b12 deficiencies and uh, and should we take a supplement or not i already answered should we take supplement or not buy from green grocers that's my suggestion the second thing is b12 is all always in the growing the life which is growing will have the b12 and b12 the best thing which i said or i feel which is commensurate with the jainism is that have the germinated food singada the the this one another is a good one if you have that one you can have the good source of the b12 and still be vegetarian but these things may not be permitted with the jainism so you have to go into the literature have the consent of our sages and seers that yes they should consent so that it becomes more popular and we don't be a uh, people with the b12 deficiency what are some of the foods we can consume with we are already test yes रमजान फास्टिंग it was basically the when the fight erupted in the makka that was the where that's why they go for they have gone for the night for night eating but that is not with the physiological it is not physiological that's the one second thing if it is taken as a festive which is often then it defeats the purpose of the fasting that the two whereas in the jain jain fasting doesn't tell you you have to eat in the day also it is a jain way of diet so jain way of diet is as good as the ramadan fasting in the night so so we are doing almost doing it it's a, like the he is al- always doing that one only that uh, the fasting which is equivalent to the ramadan fasting but he is going doing more physiological than the this. so when it is being more described yes Actually, the Ramadan fasting is following the Arcadian cycle. Following the? Because the the Arcadian cycle, ah. you mentioned that uh, slow down at night. It's 
No, it doesn't follow. It they eat in the night only. Ramzan, they eat in the night only. Like Quran also we got no no the no, their concept is very clear. They are following the rituals which were there after the fight, after the sunset, the fighting fight will be okay. It will be stopped. So the food is cooked and then it's, that is the basically your question, sir. Yeah, I was asking as you grow older. You have more tremors. It's quite genetic also. But somebody told me that it is because of vegetarian food, they have more tremors. What do you say? Vegetarians have more tremors than non vegetarians. I am not aware of that. <laughs> 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 Dr. Sudhisha had done. Huh? Dr. Sudhisha and other people yes, said Yes. <laughs> 
or religious studies or non religious studies, there could be many more things. But the idea is how to get the root of the vegetarianism and be understand, be proud of it. As a boss, I have a family that I have done vegetarianism. But there has to, has to be a scientific thing. You have to approach it. You have to do it. You have to do it. I agree with you. I try to answer a few of the points. Perhaps one I have not touched. If we take out the word Jain and then say vegetarian, it may be more accepted by the non Jain people. But if you put Jain and then you put it across, that, that, that it goes into the anti. It becomes anti. So we go into the vegetarianism and then we say, Okay, one of the sect is doing that one. That perhaps is the... Yeah. So, and second, I agree with you that we must address to the younger generation. No, not brother. There is no point in uh, uh, convincing you, convincing to the younger people, 20, 30, 40. And in fact, if the 40 people, I like to convince them for the younger people, for the kids. I like to, because the lifestyle starts in the kids. And whatever I learned in, as a kid, it's still, it is there in my genes. Okay. Yeah. As you raise the issue of the younger generation, a lot of my friends these days are working in MSCs and APRs. So they cater to uh, the population in the West. And uh, there is a huge difference in day and night. So they usually have like complete night shifts and they completely sleep during the day. So that's like an opposite surprise okay, yes. in cycle. So how, uh, like, how can I, you know, uh, tell the teachings of this lesson to them, which could be beneficial to them? How can they uh, adopt to a better, healthier way of teaching with this lifestyle? Yeah, I tried to touch one point in that one only that ex, at least the snacks, the packed snacks can be diminished. Means we have to find a compromise. I can't tell them to have the fasting all the 30 days. No, I can't tell. But have the less packed food, packed drinks, those can be reduced. Go for the raw vegetables, raw salads. So if we develop a menu of that one, raw salads, that will be more acceptable to them and have the minimum differences between the day and night as a minimum because absolutely saying no will make, make them anti to me to my teaching and, and it has to be it's nothing that they are wrong I am wrong Thank you Any more questions? Sir, I said that whatever the lectures you have given it should definitely reach to the new next generation So according to me I think whatever the lecture you have just given should we also add these questions uh, with your suitable answers? Because uh, when a person is reading all whatever you are writing, definitely he may also face the same questions. So uh, after the reference, or uh, that definitely we should add these questions that uh, during the lecture these questions are raised and suitable answers were such. So the queries will be rest up rest down that way. So requesting is uh, whatever the questions are raised, please uh, mention these things in your uh, answers. Again, agreeing with you. Yeah, Question and answers are a better part of the presentation. You know, just concluding remark, most of the questions, they related to food. And we forgot the first, the principle of realism, which says, Ahinsa, Anikant, and Akalpya. Ahinsa is the, you know, heart of Jainism. And then he said, second thing is mental violence, is more dangerous than physical violence. Violence. That is, if you give torture to your body mind, that is more dangerous than the food we eat. They care a man stress food. May Amrit be hung with the hair vinegar. A man unstressed room, very good equanimity room, the hair be hung with the Amrit will give me a better. To help way of life, Kelly, this is, I think. One of the most important factors that we have. And you know, you know, have the Kayakna. This is what we should see. Jovi Kankaro is top. And yes, or two, case me, Hinsa Kankasa. And you will be healthy.
Thank you very much, Dr. Anubhav. Okay. So now we come to the next session. You know, this is, uh, I invite Anita. Anita, will you come on the screen? I am here, Papa. Okay. You will have to bring me on the screen. You know, now, you know, you have, we have heard that, you know, that the theoretical aspects of how to be healthy. Now, uh, Anita is a practicing person in Switzerland. How to be healthy? And then the questions are different. So she has organized it. She has organized a camp. That's a yoga camp for them, meditation camp for them. I say she has organized a camp called Rhythm of Life. Rhythm of Life Retreat. She has conducted many. Now, now we are going, she is going to conduct one in India, the first time in India. So she wants to launch that product here. So Anita, over to you. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Jai Janendra, everyone. I really wish I could uh, have been there to see you all. Um, but uh, so first, let me make a correction. The Rhythm of Life is a creation of Papa and myself. Uh, we both put together this program. And uh, I also want to first thank uh, Manisha for her beautiful uh, uh, prayer and uh, you know, May Atmahu and Dr. Sancheti, we learned so much from you. As you can see, the questions were endless. So, um, before I go on and talk about rhythm of life, I would like us all to just get a little bit more comfortable in your seat. Ideally, I would have made you stand up and do some stretches now. But, uh, you know, let's just maybe make fist with your hands and rotate them. Let's give a little movement to our body. We spoke a lot about food and uh, Dr. Sanjeti also talked about movement and how sedentary lifestyle can cause diseases as well. So just maybe just give little movements to your hands. You can wiggle your toes. If you want, you can turn your head left to right. Just any little movements right now. Maybe shrug your shoulders and drop them just to bring yourself a little bit more in your body. Now, wherever you're seated, take your awareness to your feet. Notice how your feet are placed on the floor. Notice how your seat, your hips are on your seat. Are you leaning back on your chair? So maybe you can make yourself sit up a little bit more strict. And then if you want, you can close your eyes just for a few moments. And take your awareness inside to your breath. Notice your breath. If you wish, you can bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your navel, to your stomach. And notice your breath. See if you can make it a little bit longer, a little bit more fuller. And if your mind starts wandering to why is she doing that or what's coming next, just bring it back to your breath. Nothing is more important than this breath right now. Feel your life force within you. Because who are we without this breath? So just relax the mind, relax your breath, and perhaps take this moment to just think about all that we have learned today. What has really struck a chord with you? What has resonated with you? What is the one thing for you that you want to take away from here? Bring that into your life a new ritual you would like to create for yourself, for your own well-being. Use these few long breaths, these moments of silence, just to become clear on that one thing. And when you feel complete, you bring your hands together, rub them, and then take your warm healing hands and cup your eyes. 
open your eyes and welcome back. So I hope that all of you found for yourself at least one thing you would like to do differently from now, inspired by the teachings from Dr. Sancheti. Now, Dr. Sancheti himself said, it looks simple, but it's actually difficult to apply. And um, Dr. Sancheti talked about moving from rituals to reality, because what are rituals? They are habits. They are things we do repeatedly. And, and I really agree, and I resonated with Dr. Sancheti when he said, a lot of our rituals are fear-based, are coming from do this, or you'll be kind of punished with some, something. And we should shift our mindset to have our rituals, to have our habits based on motivation, like something that's coming from deep inside, from a will to lead a happier, more fulfilling life. So Rhythm of Life is an experiential program that could help us to create or evolve the rituals we have in our life so that they come from a place of motivation and they enhance our well-being and fulfillment in life. So um, Rhythm of Life uh, is a program that is, it's, as I said, it has been created by both Papa and me. And what I love about this program is that it's really inspired. It's got the gen core values at the root of the program. But yet, it has a lot of modern science, teachings from modern science, other ancient wisdoms, yogic, Vedic texts as well. The most important is, in our opinion, is that all that we share with this program are things that we have experienced ourselves in our lives because we also are work in progress. We are also working on trying to overcome the life situations uh, or challenges that we are going through. So everything in this program will come from not just we read a book and we tell, but it's coming from a place of experience. There are three key things I would like to share about Rhythm of Life program. Um, Sushil, maybe you can um, put up the flyer first. If on the screen, you can share that. So there are three things that I would like to share about this program. So a few years back, few years back. So yeah, so Rhythm of Life, are, you know, we say that everything in the, life, in the universe has a rhythm and we need to find ours. We know the saying, go with the flow, right? So sometimes, hum zindagi ke bhao mein bhe jate. But it's also about finding our own rhythm. There is something unique about each one of us. And we need to find that balance between our own flow and the universal flow. So the rhythm of life will be a holistic retreat to relax, learn, and discover your own rhythm and manifest your life for greater fulfillment. So I'll talk about the dates and everything later on. Um, so, Sheila, if you want, please, we can go to the next, the second one. No, the, the wheel. So, a few years back, when Papa and me were having discussions about Jainism and, you know, Papa studied and became, uh, you know, to, uh, earned his PhD. So, we used to talk a lot about it. And um, the one thing that I loved about Jainism was how the word Jain was um, what Jain meant. And Papa explained to me that the, the word Jain comes from a Sanskrit or Pali word Jinna, J-I-N-A. And I wonder if how many of us actually know what that means. The word Jinna means the one who conquers themselves, right? The one who is uh, a spiritual conqueror. Now, when we read Jainism, we often read this in context of Tirthankars. And all the practices are defined to achieve that state. But to be honest, we all are householders. We want to indulge in our life. So it's about how can we be the Jinnah, the conqueror of self, whilst maintaining a domestic and a worldly life. 
So for me, that was, when I learned that, it was, I felt so proud to be a Jain because that's what I want in my own life for myself. I want to be the best version of myself. And I want my children to be the best versions of themselves. So that is just what Jinnah or Jain is all about. How do we conquer ourselves? Where the self is more our ego, our, our unnecessary desires. So just becoming clear and working hard in our life to elevate ourselves, to achieve or, or to, to grow spiritually and achieve more fulfillment and balance in life. So that is one thing that is at the center of this program is how can we conquer ourselves, become more evolved spiritually whilst maintaining a domestic householder life. Number two, the second point in our program is, as you can see from this wheel, you can see at the root of it is a very famous Jain way of depicting who we are. So you can see we have these layers, the body, the soul, etc. And then you see the outermost layer is all the different parts of our life. And Dr. Sancheti also referred to family, friends, I think Papa mentioned, being in service, our work, etc. I will not go into the details of all that. But that is what we say is our outer world. Obviously, there is an element of outer world like the economy, etc., which is not in our control at all. And also these aspects, there are sometimes things happen like health issues or relationship issues. You know, people can get fired. or So there is an outer world. But what this wheel that we have created, we call it wheel of dharma, is showing that there is that inner world as well. And rhythm of life, as you can see with the middle section, is how we bring harmony between our inner world and our outer world. And what you can see in yellow is the five gen principles, values that we are using to live our life um, fully, to bring this harmony. So the... The, the harmonizing of the inner and the outer world so that we don't feel we are victims of what's happening to us rather than in any situation that comes we can rise use our let's say Jan values and other that we'll share in the program to to be strong and in every moment every situation of our life we can feel that we can conquer we can overcome these obstacles Thank you, Sushil, for sharing that. You can go back to the first one now. Now, the third thing I want to share about this program is that this program is revolved around four questions. First one, who am I? Of course, we define ourselves by our names, etc. And I don't want to go detail into it, but it's these are the four questions. Who am I? And Manisha, when uh, she um, opened the program, she sang the most beautiful, it's one of my favorite prayers, Me Atma Hum, right? We listen to this, we listen to its words, they are so comforting. How do we bring that into our life? How do we live it? How do we just bring it to a prayer we hear to actually live it moment to moment? So that whole, so who am I is one of the four questions we address second question why me why is this happening to me why this only happens to me you know and we often have that question so we'll go deep into why me what's my dharma what's my purpose where dharma is not religion it's um it's more to um what's my purpose for living or in my life and the fourth one is now that I know my purpose and who am I and why is this happening to me, how do I live my dharma? So these are the four questions and we have put together this program. We're going to launch it in uh, November. November 11th, 13th will be the first one in Pune. You will receive all the details via the flyer. The details are also there on the net. And uh, we hope that some of you would like to join. It is um, sponsored by Jain Education, J-E-I-S. 
And if you have any questions, you can feel free to send me or Papa an email and we'll be happy to talk to you further about it. Thank you. Over to you. <coughs> that the retreat is of two days <coughs> residential at a very picturesque, serene, you know, retreat on the hills. It's a unique, very, you will feel as if you are in heaven. So we are going to organize it for two days there completely. And this will be, <coughs> before this, we'll have two or four lectures of 15 minutes each online on the four aspects that she said. And then she will provide you support that what you learn, what you practice, how can you make those as habit? Because once it becomes a habit, then you practice it automatically. And she intends to provide, you know, provides counseling and support to you for 21 days online to see that what you have learned, you actually practice and become aware. So the pamphlet is there with you. If you want to know more details, QR code has for Korea. Camera, camera, camera sir, and you will have the brochure, the procedure, and other things to do. Thank you very much, Anita. Okay. Now you know, we come to the last part of this program. And I'm, I'm trying to make it a family affair. Okay. So you met my daughter. Now I invite my son, Dr. Professor Amit Jain, to come over and summarize the proceedings of the day and propose a vote of thanks. Okay, um, it's a great, great pleasure to be here and to speak to all of you. Um, I will start with uh, thanking Manisha. Is Manisha here still or she left? She left. She left. Well, she sang so beautifully. Um, I was touched deep inside uh, by that. Now, in the remainder of the few minutes I have with you, I'll start with a point I disagree with um, in the conversation so far. So it's like pulling the devil out of the hat. Then I'll move on to Professor Sanchiti's um, talk on lifestyle, uh, dis diseases, and gen philosophy. And I'll get, now look, I'll be forthright. There are many doctors over here, right? Medical doctors, neurologists, a general practitioner, and many others. I'm not like you. I'm a doctor who's not a doctor. So by any means, uh, I'm not, um, let's say, in the element, okay? Nevertheless, I will give my take on the conversation as a J. And finally, you know, we'll have uh, conclude this session. So first of all, what's the point of contention or conflict I had on my mind? One of the things which came up in this talk is maybe the concept of vegetarianism will diffuse much more easily if we separate it from Jainism. Now the question, I thought about this because it's really, really important. And I think a good part of the talk from various sources, the audience and doctor as well, revolved around this point. Let me ask you all a question. Would a Muslim tell you to read the Quran and say, hey, this is not Islam? Would a Christian tell you to read the Bible and say, hey, this is not Christianity? Then why on the earth should we say vegetarian isn't Jain? Um, there are many vegetarians who are not Jain, but we should be damn well proud 
that this is a part, uh, integral part of Jainism. And if we're not proud and we want to hide this, then we are not true Jains. We should admit who we are and tell other people who we are. And uh, so this is my point of contention. We have to be proud. We have to be happy in our skins. Um, this is a negative note, I admit, but I'll end the talk with a positive. Very good. I everyone should. Yeah. Okay. Now coming to lifestyle diseases and gen philosophy. What I imbibed from you and. In addition, Anita is that there are several sources of lifestyle diseases. Overindulgence, anger, Papa, you said loneliness. As a neurologist, you didn't delve too much on it, stress. Um, so, I'll repeat these again, stress, not in the same order, stress, overindulgence, anger, and loneliness. Now, except for loneliness, perhaps, and I might be mistaken, each of these finds a solution in Jainism. Now, if you think about the three principles of Jainism, which you mentioned, you have Ahimsa, Anikantvat, and Aparigraha. Now, try to relate stress, overindulgence, anger, and loneliness to these three principles of Jainism. Now, if you truly practice ahimsa, that is not only what you eat. Ahimsa is how I behave with other people also. Um, if I'm not doing, if I'm not hinsa to other people, if I'm not trying to take what you have for my own benefit, if I'm more equanimous in this way, the whole concept of stress will be largely reduced. If stress reduces, then certainly I can vouch myself, neurological diseases will diminish, but many other diseases, cardiac diseases, other should reduce. So we made one association, overindulgence. What is overindulgence? This is the opposite of aparigra. Aparigra says abstinence. Overindulgence is the lack of abstinence. So actually, if you follow not strict aparigraha, but you determine your limits because at the end of the day, we cannot be pure ahimsa, we cannot be pure aparigraha, etc. Set a limit and that will solve the problem of overindulgence. If you solve the problem of overindulgence, you will automatically attack ob ob uh, obesity, which you mentioned. You will solve um, the problem to some extent of um, diabetes and many other diseases. So without going um, too far, we have the solutions within Jainism itself. Anger is the opposite. Anger is the opposite of nonviolence. 
objects. That is another source of the four sources of uh, lifestyle diseases. Anger is a big source. If we can eliminate that through the practice of ahimsa, we have made quite a big head start in combating lifestyle diseases. In uh, so the, these three things are the source, and additionally, there was a big deal of discussion. There was a lot of discussion about fasting. Now, just before this session started, I met our old friend Pradyo, and he had a lifestyle disease. And I asked him, would you like to share your experience? So basically what happened with Pradyog is, is um, in, uh, diabetes count went up to 300 and it was not coming down. And then he engaged in a system of fasting. So you have a real example of the power of fasting coming from the audience. Pradyog, would you like to share that? Yeah, come. चलिए मैं हिंदी में बात करता हूं क्योंकि वो ज्यादा अच्छा रहेगा मेरे लिए और आपके लिए भी तो अमित जी ने मुझे देखा तो उन्होंने हम लोग मिलते रहते हैं एक्चुअली मेरे ब्रदर ही हैं मान लीजिए आप ये तो कई साल बाद देखा तो वो कहते हैं बड़े अच्छे दिख रहे हो <laughs> मैंने जो मैंने जो ऐसा क्या हो गया तो फिर मैंने बताया कि मैंने आज से 2 साल पहले 4 दिन के 8 बार फास्ट किए थे 4 दिन फास्ट फिर 10 दिन खाना फिर 4 दिन फास्ट 10 दिन खाना और इसके बाद मेरी डायबिटीज एक्चुअली क्योर हो गई मतलब मैं 300 से 80 पर आ गया और मेरा वेट भी 82 से 64 पर आ गया उसके बाद और अब 2 साल हो गए हैं मैंने फास्टिंग बंद कर दी थी उसके बाद लेकिन अभी भी मेरी डायबिटीज ठीक है मतलब 110 है थोड़ी बढ़ गई है और वेट भी बढ़ गया है 64 से मैं 72 पर आ गया हूं और मैं अब एक दो दिन के बाद से फिर से वही फास्ट डेज की फास्टिंग आठ बार फिर से करने वाला हूं <laughs> मैं रहता हूं नीदरलैंड्स में तो मतलब मेरा अलग था कि मैं आज यहां हूं और इस वजह से मैं आ सका तो थैंक यू वेरी मच सो दैट वाज अ लिटिल एग्जांपल एंड आई एम श्योर आप सबकी लाइफ में ऐसे एग्जांपल्स होंगे और कोई जैसे मम्मी सफर कर रही थी डायबिटीज से उन्हें वक्त पे ये इंफॉर्मेशन पहुंचती तो आउटकम कुड हैव बीन स्लाइटली डिफरेंट ओके नाउ वन अदर टॉपिक व्हिच केम अप इन द in the previous talks was probiotics and whether this has little organisms in it which when we consume the probiotic they get we kill them so actually i was thinking about this now i'm not a doctor but i think the type of organisms and some of you can correct me uh, which are in probiotics are actually bacteria. Am I right? Yeah. Now, bacteria is a part of the, is it a part of the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom? Mm -hmm. So then, as genesis, gens, we are allowed to eat plants. So this question is finished Probiotic slow. So I just, this is one reflection I had. I'd just like to share with you. Um, the final thing is, you know, I started on a contentious note. I told you we should be proud to be gents. Um, yesterday, I had dinner with two of my friends. Uh, childhood friend who are, happened to be gents, okay, and 
one of them raised the question and the question even you've thought of is the demography of jains actually decreasing which means is the number of jains actually decreasing in the world why are we not succeeding in propagating the religion and we had a lively debate on this and this is related to the first question so who is a jain i'd like to have you think who is a jain are we the most faithful jains what is a jain is a jain someone who follows the scriptures the jain scriptures is a jain someone who follows ahimsa a parigra and anekantvat i would say a true jain is someone who follows these principles somewhere along the line in the conversation we had today i heard jainism is not a religion it is a way of life if you accept that jainism is not a religion there is no god in jainism it is a way of life then actually the numbers of jains is not decreasing theek hai ek jain hai maas khane lagta hai wo jain nahi raha ye suniye ye sochiye aap duniya mein kitne jain ho gaye now we just came back from europe we had a holiday over there but the number of vegan restaurants in europe increased. has increased exponentially let me tell you yeah. veganism is much more difficult than vegetarianism because you don't have any milk products uh, that means चीज गया आपका दूध गया आपका फिर बचा क्या वेजिटेरियन के ऊपर से ये भी छोड़ दो और दुनिया लाखों करोड़ों की संख्या में ये अडॉप्ट कर दी अमेरिका में यूरोप में यहाँ पे इंडिया में तो पीछे पड़ गए इट्स बिकम ऑलमोस्ट अ फैड नाउ यह हिंसक हो गए एंड दे डू इट फॉर टू रीजन ओनली either there is a health reason ye kam hoti or they believe in it which means unke andar se atma shakti se ye unke vichar jagrar hue hain kehte hain humne humko gai ko nahi khana chahiye gai ke bachhde se doodh nahi lena chahiye aise aise karke wo vegan ho gaye so if you count these as jains and this comes to the original point of the label jain so these people are not labeled jain but you count them as jains to mari sankhya to actually multiply ho gayi ye khushi ki baat hai so this is the note of optimism i'd like to leave you with we should be proud of who we are thank you Thank you.